Hello and welcome back to another episode of Open Air Atheist. I'm James Theodore Stable the Third. Um, just a little announcement first. Um, you will be able to find me elsewhere on the web. Um, I will still be on YouTube, of course, uh, continuing this show. But you will be able to find me elsewhere uh, very, very soon, in a couple days. Um, you'll be able to find me at www.openairatheist.com. And the uh, website is currently under construction, and uh, so just letting all of you folks out there uh, be aware of that. Okay, this is my uh, second response to uh, Random Theology. He left some more, uh, he left some responses to my last video. Um, so let's go ahead and get on that. Um, the proof is that you could not make sense of evidence unless the Bible is true. Okay, you haven't proven your case. Okay, you still haven't proven that I can't make sense of evidence unless the Bible is true. Show me how that's true. Okay, that's my challenge to you. Show me. Um, so you admit you are arbitrary. You assume the Bible cannot be the Word of God. No, I, I'm not making any assumptions. I'm just saying with the evidence I have thus far, it's highly unlikely that the Bible is the Word of God or even that God exists. This makes you give an example, personal notebook. Uh, that assumes it is possible for another worldview that can provide the preconditions for intelligibility. This is not so. If you disagree, prove it. Actually, since you're the one in the affirmative, uh, I'm the atheist, you're the one making the affirmative, you're the Christian, you are the one who must provide evidence. All you have done is borrowed from the Christian worldview with your notebook example. Actually, what I've done is made fun of you um, because your arguments are silly, okay? Uh, you, have, you have not proven my argument false. In fact, you have strengthened it. Uh, you have demonstrated that the non-Christian must assume the Christian worldview even when arguing against it. This is clearly seen in, the, in your notebook example. At best, your notebook example is fallacious, and it shows you misunderstand the arguments I presented in my videos. Watch them all and then deal with my disjunctive syllogism. Uh, okay, um, you are not using proper hermeneutics with 2 Timothy 3.16. Okay, I love that statement. Uh, what do you mean by that? Okay, maybe you could clarify that in some comments. Um, actually, uh, I did prove it. Uh, and this is in reference to, uh, yeah, to the video. Uh, you need to watch the rest of the videos. Your arguments are refuted. The proof is that you could not make sense of evidence unless the Bible is true. Unless which of the manuscripts are true? Which of the thousands of variants in, in the Bible are true? Which ones do you claim are true? Okay? <clears throat> Continues. Um... Actually, let me go ahead and read my response now. No, you're the one who doesn't get it, and that's sad. My notebook argument was an example to show you how stupid your arbitrary and arbitrary your arguments are. You're making the affirmative claim that God exists and that the Bible is indeed the words of God. Therefore, you are the one who, who must prove his case. First, you claim that without your worldview, there is there are no preconditions for intelligibility. But again, claims are a dime a dozen. Jim Jones, the cult leader, made uh, his claims. So did David Koresh. Not only that, but prove Orthodox Judaism. You know, the very same religion, Christianity, claims to be a fulfillment of isn't uh, the preconditions for intelligibility. And by the way, uh, I wasn't borrowing from the Christian worldview. I was simply uh, showing how absurd it is and making light of it. 
Secondly, how do you know that the every scripture in 2 Timothy is talking about the New Testament as you have it today? How do you know the Gospel of Thomas and Judas and other such books aren't a part of that every scripture? Third, you still haven't um, answered my question about the many variant manuscripts. You still haven't informed me which of the many manuscript versions are the words of your God. What about the last 12 verses of Mark or the women caught in adultery and the hundreds of words and phrases that are in controversy concerning the New Testament? What about the outright uh, contradictions in John's account of the resurrection? What about uh, the outright dishonesty uh, in the, um, the outright dishonesty the New Testament writers, uh, the New Testament makes when quoting verses from the Tanakh? Until you address these issues, uh, you don't even begin to have a case for Christianity. And again, you need to go back through my videos. You need to address the, uh, make a better refutation of the, uh, the Trinity. All you did was, was explain how it could be possible um, that there could be a Trinity. You quoted some verses to support your claim that there's Trinity found in the Old Testament, but those verses were proven to be taken out of context. Um, and had nothing to do with God being more than one person. Um, there's no explicit anything in the Old Testament affirming the Christian doctrine, I should say the pagan Christian doctrine of the Trinity, um, which other religions have espoused as well. Um, <clears throat> so you need to address the, uh, the first of all, the the made-up verse in the last verse in uh, chapter 2 of Matthew, you need to address the uh, verses that I brought up in the Dis Dishonest, Dishonest New Testament, part 1 and 2. Um, you need to address the uh, resurrection account of John. Um, there's a lot of things that you need to address before we can even consider whether uh, the New Testament is the Word of God as you claim. At best, uh, you know, I mean, a rabbi right now of Orthodox Judaism could make the same claim. Well, you know, my religion counts for the pre preconditions of intelligibility, and I don't need the New Testament to, to uh, account for those preconditions. Secondly, as an atheist, I'm not, again, I'm not saying that, um, I'm not saying there's some ultimate objective meaning out there for anything. Uh, that is still yet to be seen. How do I know that human beings don't give things meaning and there isn't, uh, you know, just arbitrarily? How do I know that uh, humans don't assign, assign moral values to concepts and to, to uh, uh, you know, to things? How do I know that? How do I know that any of these things actually exist and they're not just things that we make up, um, that they're not arbitrary? Uh, kind of like what I, Albert Einstein said, someone was nice enough to leave me the comment here, MP478070, three hours ago. Uh, I have a quote for you by Albert Einstein. I do not believe in immortality of the individual, and I consider ethics to be an exclusively human concern with no superhuman authority behind it. Uh, so there you have it. Someone what, um, much more intelligent than you has a different opinion about uh, the origin of such things. Um, so you need to address these issues and um, stop just restating the same arguments over and over. You need to explain these arguments and why you consider them to be arguments. Why do you consider Christianity be the pre uh, to have the preconditions for intelligibility? Okay, and not other religions. You still haven't explained that. How your religion is the only religion that can uh, have the preconditions for these things. Okay, so um, you need to get on that. And until you do, don't leave any more comments. Okay, if you're not going to address these issues that I brought up, don't bother leaving any comments. All right, peace out.